What is up dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today I'm doing part three of our Ignition Assault uh, review. Going through the whole set, everything that matters in the set. We've already done the generic cards that matter in the set. We've already done the archetype support in the set that matters. And now we are doing the brand new archetypes. This, this set actually has four new archetypes. So it's actually kind of crazy because usually sets have two, maybe three new archetypes. This one's got four, which is wild and uh yeah we might as well start with the one that's literally one fifth of the entire set there are 20 adding mr cards in this set alone which is wild so let's get into it so adding mr is a cyberspace archetype played by a character in the anime called ai i believe and uh it's cool it, it uses every single attribute but they're all cybers and it has every single extra mechanic you can think of right it uses um fusions, synchros, XCs, links, and even um, rituals, even though that's not an extra mechanic, uses all those like classic mechanics. Now one of the flaws in the deck would be that like someone could say that the deck seem, seems like it's kind of spread too far out. Like it's not as cohesive enough to really end on substantial stuff. In, f in fact, it almost seems like some of the cards are, are trying to do too many different things. Like, all the main deck monsters almost feel like they're trying to get into different extra deck monsters, but not together get into any extra deck monster you want. So I think sometimes you can lose out on versatility there. But I do still think it's a good start. You still have very powerful stuff. You've got multiple Rota cards in your deck. You've Or not multiple Rota, but Stratos cards in your deck more. So you've got powerful boss monsters. You've got spell and trap removal, monster removal. You've got um, huge link play potential with stuff like Dark Templar. You've got uh, just a Trap Negator, a card that just straight up can negate trap cards. With Linger Evo, that's just the link one. You can just, as long as you put any Cypress on the field, you can negate a trap, which is pretty cool. You've got a Reborn. You've got stuff that specials from Grave, or from Hand. You've got uh, Love Fusion, which is like a pseudo super poly where you can just use any link monster your opponent controls as. Um, material for that which is very good so you have some pieces here but i just think cohesively it's not ready yet even though it has 20 cards part of that is just because they wanted to make this an archetype that uses every mechanic so you've got six right is it one two three four five six no seven you got seven extra deck monsters right here just out of that 20 just because they wanted to make it a, a deck that uses everything. So like you kind of miss out on some stuff there. Some of their cards aren't very competitive so you can almost cross those off as part of like the archetype when you're looking at them from a competitive standpoint. But it's still a cool deck. I still think it's cool. I just think they put probably too many cards towards this. The set could have been way better if you took a couple more, a couple of added Nister cards out, the, the less useful ones, and put in some other cool cards. But still, I think it's an archetype a good amount of people will like. There's already generic cyber support out there so i think it has a chance but i'm not sure if it's ready just yet next up we've got ancient warriors a new uh beast warrior um at type deck which is very cool as well doesn't have any extra deck cards yet but um they do have some pretty interesting stuff here they've got um all level fours or all these words so stuff like um fire fist cards can totally be useful in the deck they they work based off of like some of them send like a card on field or in hand to graveyard to get like another ancient warrior card which is really nice um some of them can there's one of them that can like special straight from the deck there's one of them that like searches any monster one that searches any spell or trap when they get stuff back from grave so they have a lot of utility and then they have these big chungus monsters that make you think that the deck wants to go second. You have stuff like Guan Yun. He just specials if you're, he's just a cyber drag. If your opponent controls a monster and you don't special summon him, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can just pop a monster. So like free special summon going second and then a free pop going second as well. That's even better than cyber dragon. Uh, but cyber dragon can also do the contact fuse thing. So, well, debatable, we'll say. <laughs> We're, but yeah, he's really good. And they also have um, Zhang Di, who also kind of does similar things. He buffs himself very, very big um, during your turn. He can special summon himself fairly easily, as long as you can get two ancient warriors on the field. And then he can potentially attack twice as a huge beater. This deck really seems like it wants to do battle phase stuff as well. It's really cool. It's waiting on other stuff. They have a spell that searches any... Um, uh, monsters in the archetype. You've got um, a card that can potentially negate any attribute monster if you call it right or you know the matchup, which is cool. And then you also have like a battle phase shenanigan trap, which is not bad because the deck is built around the battle phase, right? It would be worse otherwise, but it's it's not that bad actually. 
Um, but overall, it's really cool. It has the support kind of like how Ad Ignisters have Sign at Mining. This deck has access to like Fire Formation Tanky and also potentially Tensu for a double summon for stuff like that. So I really think the potential is here. Again, like Ad Ignisters, who already have cards confirmed for Eternity Code, um, Ancient Warriors also have, I think, another five cards confirmed for that set. So this deck's definitely going to get another buff then. We'll talk about those when the time comes. But yeah, I think it's a good start, and I think it's another cool deck. I think people, a lot of people will love the design of this, almost giving you a six samurai slash fire formation feel to it, which is really cool. So I think they're, I think they'll be a fan favorite. Next up, we have a new ritual deck we'll put on the end, um, which is really interesting because this is a ritual deck that does not have a ritual spell card. In fact, every single megalith monster in the deck, which I believe is six right now, has the effect themselves where they are the cards that trigger your ritual summons. You don't have to have the spell, which is nice because that's one less card um, to, to make the ritual summon happening, saving you card advantage, except for some of them. I think the big ones all have to discard. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the big ones discard to do the ritual summoning, but the small ones can just do it from the field, which is really nice. Um, and then some of them also have a quick effect. So what you want to do is you kind of want to set up a quick effect ritual, and then ritual summon out Bethor. Bethor is the best one on your opponent's turn, because if you can ritual summon him out quickly on your opponent's turn, he pops cards, uh, your opponent controls, up to the different monsters used for its ritual summon. So you can potentially, potentially pop usually two, maybe three uh, cards your opponent controls on um, on summon, which is pretty good, and then you've got a guy that like protects you from targeting, which is all right. The deck definitely needs to be fleshed out more, though. You've got like the main six pieces that are going to ritual summon themselves, but you need more support. The um, field spell is okay. It lets you recur uh, ritual monsters from your hand if you've like just done a ritual summon, which is nice, and then it protects them from battle, one one from battle each turn, which is okay. You've got stuff like promotion. This lets you double the level of a monster, so on your opponent's turn, you could like double a one of the level fours and then use effect a quick effect get Bethor out by tributing itself, which is pretty nice, but it only popped one. And then you've got Emergence. Emergence is really good, actually, though, because it's just once per turn, special summon a Megalith in defense mode from Grave. Like, that's really good. But still, I think the deck's just missing some right now. It, it's missing, en like, more ways to, like, disrupt. Like, Bethar is not enough. Like, he, they need something else. And he's only 1,500. Like, how do you... You have to go Bethor into Phaleg, but then if you don't kill, you want to be able to set up another Bethor. And I'm not sure how easy that is without, like, the, the uh, field spell. So... I think it's fine. I know we already have some generic ritual support already in Yu-Gi-Oh! So, like, hopefully that can maybe help carry it. But most ritual decks that I've seen, at least the better ones, tend to rely on level 6 rituals, not level 4s and 8s. It seems a little awkward there. So, I'm not sure if, like, um, what is it? Uh, Oracle. No, not Oracle. What's his name? Oh, my God, I can't even remember his name. Whatever, the, the main ritual deck, I can't remember what it, what the heck his name is. Crud. Whatever. But he's the level 6 based one, you play him with like the, um, uh, the fairies. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking so hard right now. Whatever. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Um, there. So like, I think these guys just need more help. They need another, more archetypal stuff. Maybe some more spells and traps to help like turbo them into their situation. And they definitely need another way to set up disruption. He cannot be your only disruption in the deck. They need something else there. But we'll see. And then the last deck here is probably to me the most exciting deck here, which is Plunder Patrol. This is the new TCG archetype. We only have seven cards revealed for this deck, but man, are they potentially very, very good. So, we've got two monsters. We've got Redbeard and Whitebeard. They're little... Obviously, it's a pun. Patrol. T-R-O-L-L. -L, yeah, like, little troll pirates, which is really cool. Um, the main deck monsters have effects where they can just special summon a monster from your extra deck, a plunder patrol monster from your extra deck, with the same attribute as a monster your opponent controls or has in their graveyard, and then they equip themselves to it because the monsters also gain effects if they are equipped with a plunder patrol card. You also have a, uh, well, also, okay, Whitebeard also floats when it's sent from hand or field to the graveyard. It special summons another Plunder Patrol straight from deck. Very, very strong. And Mady does the same thing, except when he's sent, he equips himself to a Plunder Patrol monster you control, which is also good. 
Um, yeah, you've got a field spell that discards any card from hand to search any Plunder Patrol card. That's so good. Also, if, if this card is in the graveyard, you can just um, send a Plunder Patrol card from your spell and trap zone to set this card back to the field. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You, spe you set this back to the field, and then you bounce the card you had on the field back to your hand, which is even better. Um, and then it also gives a small buff to your Plunder Patrol stuff. Also, that card's insane. Plunder Patrol Booty, this changes the attribute of every monster, or of a monster on the field, which is so strong. I mean, you just think about what I just told you. That the main deck monsters can only summon based on the attribute your opponent has or in the graveyard. Well, we've got a card that can change the attribute of a monster on the field. So it becomes whichever one I want at any given time. Also... You can take a Plunder Patrol monster to a graveyard and either shuffle it into the deck or special summon it. Any Plunder Patrol card, it could have been any of your boss monsters that are in the graveyard in a grindier game, or it could be any of your little guys that are in the graveyard, just to get them on board. So wild. This card is so good for the deck, for sure. Um, next up, you have Blackbeard. We have our extra deck monsters. He kind of lets you do a quick effect tag out into your extra deck, just like these guys, so maybe if... I don't know how he comes up specifically, but he definitely comes up. Like, he, he targets a monster you control. Um, you special summon a plunder control from the extract with the same attribute as a monster your plunder controls are in the graveyard. And then you equip the monster you targeted originally from your field to it, um, and then draw one card. So it draws you, it gets you a monster from your extract with an equip. It can do it on your turn. That's also very important, is because... The, the main deck guys can only do it on your opponent's turn, so this guy can do it a little faster if you can get a monster on board, which is really nice. And then you've got your two boss monsters that we have so far. We've got uh, Braun and Moark. Braun lets you um, banish a spell or trap your opponent controls, then um, add a uh, Plunder Patrol monster from deck to hand, or as Moark lets you banish a monster your opponent controls, then add a spell or trap. Um, from your deck to your hand, and if they are equipped with a Plunder Patrol card, they actually become quick effects, which is even better. Like, it's one thing to have removal like that, but when they're, oh, disruption like that is nuts. It does make stuff like like um, Cosmic Cyclone and, tw and Twin Twisters, like, better, because if they just pop it before they even put anything on board, you may not have anything to banish, so they just kind of take away your disruption there. But still, I think it, you can get some really strong disruptions out of this deck. I really, really highly anticipate this card. We already have news uh, revealing that we are going to get another uh, round of support in the in uh, Eternity Code as to more TCG exclusives. And I really hope that's like enough to round it out. I'm already excited. Like I want to play it now. Like I don't care. I'll play an inconsistent bad version now just because I love the the lore, the archetype, the artwork, everything for it so far, but I think this one has the most potential competitively and uh, otherwise, but uh, yeah, this one is really, really clean. It's a little bit higher rarity as well. That is something to note as well. Uh, Braun and Moark, I believe, are secret rares. I think Captain is ultra, and I think the two monsters may be ultra, and then these are like rares, I think. So those are low, but these are middle, like these are ultras and those are secrets. So kind of higher rarity on those, so be careful there. The Attic Nisters have some higher rarities. The Ancient Wars, I believe, are like super rare and below. And Megaliths are like almost entirely like common and rare. So um, they'll be super, super cheap. So those are the four new archetypes coming in Ignition Assault. Pair that with the archetypal support and all the generic cards coming in the set. I think it's a decent set. I don't think it's amazing. I don't think it's out of this world. But I think it's a solid set. I think there's some cool new archetypes coming. I think there are a lot of good archetypal support cards and a couple of generic cards that uh, I think will keep this set um, at a good spot. I think somewhere in the middle of the pack. It's not bad. It's not amazing. Somewhere in the middle. But let me know your guys' thoughts. Let me know which one of these archetypes specifically you are the most excited about because uh, I'm curious to see what you guys are waiting for out of this set. But, uh, of course, as always, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. And I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> I'm going crazy, man. I talk so much. <sighs> I need to eat some water. Eat some water. That's me. John Hanna, eating water. <laughs>